I'm delighted to be joined today by Yuri Butzer, the Government Commissioner for Public Debt Management for Ukraine. Yuri, you managed to launch a transaction just a few days after the Russian invasion, confounding all received logic about needing a calm market to issue a bond. And subsequently, you've raised, I think, over $3 billion equivalent of money in the domestic market in war conditions. Is this about really needing the money, or is this about sending a signal as business as usual for the capital markets? It's both. Uh, first of all, it was important for us actually to start uh, operation as quick as possible as usual to, to spread the confidence across the population. And it, so government was functioning as usual. We were paying all their bills. And also banking system was functioning, so we wanted the, the, the less the, 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 the least we wanted is to have a bank run or you know or some stuff like that. So all the banking system was working normally, and obviously we were like working normally as a GMO. Uh, so that's why yeah, we, it was five days since the invasion started. We, we do bonds normally, uh, normally every Tuesday, and first Tuesday after the war started, we had the first bond issue, and then it was rather successful. Uh, we did, uh, we rebranded those bonds as the war bonds because most of the spendings uh, are or war related or humanitarian related uh, but caused by war as well. Uh, and it got a lot of traction and a lot of support immediately. So yes, yeah, you mentioned already $3 billion in total and second business, biggest uh, source of funding for the budget until now. Right. And all of the necessary infrastructure even five days after the invasion? that very dark moment, all of the necessary bank infrastructure, settlement systems were all working fine? You know, what helped surprisingly is the COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, so because people learned how to work in remote mode. Uh, so uh, banking payment system was working, it was reallocated because there were contingency plans. So we spent those five days actually to make sure that all the primary dealers have their set up, everyone has access to their terminals. Um, we run a Bloomberg auction system domestically, so um, mm -hmm. uh, we made sure that we have remote access to our uh, setup because normally it's like physically linked story. So we tested over the weekend and we, when we understood on Monday that everything is up and running, we checked also with the back offices, with custodians, etc. And once we understood it's, it's working, actually we, we thought that like, we, we have everything in place to have the auction. And it was probably the most media covered auction we ever had in our <laughs> history to be honest we have ever everywhere you know all, all the global medias mm -hmm. were tracking that one yeah that's absolutely stunning that you're able to do that in those conditions i think everyone was very pleasantly surprised by it um thinking more generally about the job of a debt management office such as yourselves it's quite conceptually straightforward you work out the government's revenue you work out the government's expenditure and you fund the difference in the environment that you're operating in the moment, can you do any of those things in a reliable way? We can, but the long-term horizon of planning in our case is three months. Right. So what we can really predict is for three months period of time, it's very hard to go beyond, you know, because situation is very um, like um, uh, dynamic, uh, to, to put it this way. So we started, uh, when we started, we had uh, uh, war in 10 regions of, of the country accounting for 55% of GDP. Now it's like contained to six, which account for 25% of GDP. So obviously there is some uh, rebound in revenues and mm -hmm. we need to account for that one. So we, are, we, we, we monitor it on a weekly basis you know, and try to adjust our planning. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's, that's the biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. And you know, the last time I saw you um, in Kiev was when we were working on um, reforms of the bond market, in particular the covered bond market, and I know that was just a small part of the overall program that you had to develop the capital markets. Obviously Covid's got in the way, obviously the invasion's got in the way. Is the plan to continue in the long term with that capital market development program? Absolutely. Unfortunately, we had to pause it, but uh, we spent a lot of time to develop the local markets and to make local markets understandable for international investors. So we got the first results were in 2018 and 19 when we started getting inflows to the government bond market and uh, we got around $5 billion of mm -hmm. inflows. Uh, and became kind of a, a darling of the market in terms of local currency. So with that, actually, we started to develop secondary market, you know, looking at like how to better arrange the concentrating liquidity in one place, working with the regulator, with central bank to, to simplify 
the work of effects market. So all this like bits and pieces which are needed for the market to function properly and to be similar to any other market in Central and Eastern Europe. And my, my personal experience is coming from Warsaw Stock Exchange, so I know mm. how it has how it's working in Poland. And uh, so it was one of the models for me to look at. Other models were actually Latin American markets, which I really have very vibrant uh, local markets. And we had support from the World Bank, uh, like also helping us, any BRD helping us to, to take the best knowledge uh, across the globe. And obviously we don't want to lose it. So if, if not the war, we would have the first our bond entering GBI AM index, a local bond, mm -hmm. which could be also a good signal for a lot of investors who are more passive about index trackers to look at the Ukrainian market to start to get in. And obviously our next steps was municipal bonds, you know, corporate bonds domestically. So everything in local currency uh, was the idea. Obviously now it's on pause, but mm -hmm. once the war is over, we want to resume and I think given the need for the uh, investments and the need mm. for raising the capital f from both not only sovereign but also sub sovereign level municipalities and those corporates i think uh, that having a properly working market will be essential for them to have mm. to cover their f funding needs which was exactly going to be my next point mm. about the rebuilding i know it's far too early to start talking about how much it will be what the priorities will be how it's going to work but could you comment on what the rebuild might look like? Look, unfortunately, <laughs> this number uh, we will need is, in, is increasing every day. And that's, mm -hmm. uh, that's a big problem. Uh, we try to calculate and uh, all the damages, you know, and obviously the most logical way to cover those is from reparations from Russia, because normally who causes the war has to cover the uh, losses. But obviously we are looking at other ways. I'm not sure we will be able to cover it from like just government borrowing on the commercial market because uh, we are now talking about the hundreds of billions of dollars already, you know, mm. this number is not like decreasing. So we will definitely rely on a lot of support from donors and from, in, like from our partners across the globe who help us now. Uh, but uh, we also need to be mindful that those countries have their other priorities, so we need to have a proper access to the, to the capital markets to finance part of this bill at least. So that's a combination of multiple sources. We are thinking about it now. We are the EU is doing a big effort uh, already in setting up some facilities for that mm. uh, or like discussing them. Uh, we believe that part of this can come also through the fact that we applied for candidate status to EU and we, we hope to get access to the structural funds of EU which helped other countries joining EU to rebuild their economy. Obviously, Ukrainian circumstances are different, but um, there are already mechanics in place in European Union uh, like to help with the COVID, as post-COVID uh, rebuilding of the economies. And I think our case can be integrated in, uh, in that uh, setup, which already there in, um, mm. in European Union. Continuation of that with a lot of goodwill from all of the people of Western Europe, I think. Yeah, I think that that's 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 very impressive. You know how uh, how much support we are getting, mm. uh, and not only on in the good words, you know, but actually with starting from military equipment, but also with the financing. So, I think we united uh, uh, a lot of countries and helped them to to find to mm. refine the purpose, you know, of of the joint efforts mm. uh, as the Ukrainian case. We even managed to unite the U.S. Congress, you know, so that's something not often happens in, in the modern history. So, the, but that's really very much, uh, very much appreciated, and that's obviously we will need the support further on. Mm. Well, long may that support continue. Well, thank Yuri, you. But, uh, thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for all of the work that you're doing. Thanks for having me here. Thank you.